Item ID AEP-021. Enclosure designation Meridian. Special containment procedures. AEP-021 is to be kept in enclosure cell TOFAT-3. TOFAT-3 and the interior of AEP-021 are to be video monitored at all times for potential changes to the environment. No personnel are to enter AEP-021 under any given circumstance. Description. AEP-021 appears to be a wooden crate measuring 2 meters tall by 2 meters wide by 8 meters long, usually containing one wooden table, one wax candle, one wooden stool, and one sapient humanoid designated AEP-021-1. Tests involving this crate and its contents have indicated a resistance to damage aberrant with their apparent wooden construction. AEP-021-1 appears as an overweight human male of advanced age with long hair and a distinctly high number of liver spots. A long scar traces along the left side of the subject's head, originating in an empty eye socket, extending over a bald spot on the left side of the head and terminating at the rear of the scalp. This entity exhibits symptoms of Alzheimer's disease and has been observed to talk to people who are not present or to personnel assuming they are acquaintances from its past, making interviews difficult. AEP-021-1 has displayed the ability to freely manipulate its appearance and reality inside AEP-021, creating and destroying matter and warping the interior of AEP-021 into various shapes and sizes, even creating interiors that the exterior of AEP-021 should not be able to contain. However, AEP-021-1 has proven to be unaware of and completely unable to affect the world outside of AEP-021. It has been noted that, while AEP-021-1 has proven able to create objects of organic matter, and these objects can also be ambulatory, none have, to date, displayed life signs. It is suspected that AEP-021-1 puppets them with its reality-manipulating abilities despite his belief that they are fully real people. AEP-021 was recovered from AEP-2423 on 20. Addendum A. Attached are abridged video logs, including initial interview of AEP-021-1 and several reconstruction events. For more complete video logs, refer to TOFAT-3 logs in hard drives R006 and R007. Access interview 021-A. Interviewed. AEP 021-1. Interviewer. Doctor. Forward. Initial access into AEP 021 had been established shortly before beginning of interview. A small video recorder was set up just outside of AEP 021 and a microphone brought into the crate. Purpose of interview is to establish nature of AEP 021-1. Begin log 11.20 a.m. AEP-021-1 seems mildly confused, looking up and blinking as interviewer enters. Doctor. Hello, can you understand me? AEP-021-1. Subject smiles. Of course I can understand you. General, what are you doing here? Aren't you usually down at your home on Lake Arview this time of year? I... what? I'm sorry. My name is Doctor. We have never met, be- Interrupting. Nonsense, General. I've known you since I was a young boy. It's grand to see you. Subject rises and embraces, Doctor. Now, please, have a seat. At ease. Subject gestures jovially, and a wooden chair appears. Interviewer considers the chair for a moment giving it an experimental tap before taking a seat. Well, uh, it's been some time, hasn't it? I thought it would be good to come up and visit. How have you been? Subject laughs loudly. Oh, I've been well, but you know how it is. When you're running the entire world, you don't have much time to do anything. But Mary and the boy are doing well. I bet you will want to see them. Mary... Come here. General Begrone has come to visit. Subject waits for a moment. Mary? Subject turns in seat and observes wall of AEP-021. Oh, she's not... where? 
Subject's face goes lax as he looks about AEP-021 for a few moments before beginning to stare at his hands in his lap. Interviewer waits for a few seconds before speaking again. Sir? Subject looks up, appearing confused again for a moment. Oh, right, dear son. Is it time for dinner already? I didn't hear the bells being rung. Interviewer thinks for a moment. Um, no, sir, it's not time for dinner. I only heard... I heard you weren't feeling well. Sir, I came at Miss Mary's request to see how you were. Subject smirks. Oh, that was sweet of her. I haven't been feeling well, though. Not at all. I've been feeling alone. I've been feeling alone for quite a long time. Subject is silent for a moment. Where did everyone go, Kessan? I don't know, sir. Maybe you could tell me where we are, and we could try to work from there. Where are we? Subject looks around at interior of AEP-021. I... I don't know. Subject's face goes lax again, and he begins to stare at the table. Interviewer nods slightly, and looks to someone outside range of the camera. This is going to be a difficult one, I think. Interviewer stands and moves to exit AEP-021. Subject looks up. Don't go, son. Interviewer stops in his tracks, and stands there for a few minutes. I can't seem to move my legs. End log 12.03 p.m. Closing statement. Doctor could not be removed from AEP-021. He survived for 16 months, during which he conducted several additional interviews and eventually reported fondness for AEP-021-1 before his death at the hands of AEP-021-1 on 20. In Incident 021-A, all future interviews are to be conducted via drone. Access Incident 021-B. 20. AEP-021-1 begins speaking in a subdued tone to a person named Mary, though no one else is present in AEP-021. After approximately 12 minutes, the interior of AEP-021 changes. Recording devices outside AEP-021 display objects interior as a black space. Recording devices inside AEP-021 are moved around to various newly created locations within AEP-021. Attached is a video log from best positioned recording device. Video captures back of a purple velvet love seat in front of a lit fireplace. Location is otherwise unlit. Two heads can be seen above the rim of the love seat. One is assumed to be a younger version of AEP-021-1, estimated age of 22. The other is an unidentified woman with red hair, assumed to be the figure AEP-021-1 was referring to as Mary. The sounds of an infant can be heard. Several minutes of silence pass before any words are spoken. Mary, I'm glad the war is over. You have no idea how much I've been worried about you. AEP-021-1 Laughing Oh, you didn't have to be worried about me? Not even a single weapon they dreamt up could do anything after I decided to show up. That's not what I meant. Momentary silence I hear stories of what happened out there. Things they say you did. Most of the rest of the world is gone. They say that it's your doing. Momentary silence I'm afraid the war may have changed you. The room remains quiet for a few moments. Well, have I changed? You would know better than anyone. Am I still the same boy who used to chase the Grinson's cat around the village with you? Laughing. Well, you're certainly not the same boy, and I'm not the same girl. You know that. We're living in a mansion the size of the entire village, and I'm learning how to treat with princesses and princes. We're not those children anymore. Well, I think that's your answer. We've both changed, but change can be good. The room remains quiet for a moment. I suppose so. A moment later, AEP-021-1 and the interior of the crate return to their usual state. It is suspected that AEP-021-1 
was recreating a memory in this incident. No. Recording devices inside AEP-021 have been upgraded to mobile drones. Access incident 021-C. 20. AEP-021-1 begins scowling at the table, mumbling indistinctly. This lasts for approximately 30 seconds before the interior of AEP-021 changes in a way similar to incident 021-B. Recording devices outside AEP-021 display object's interior as a black space. Recording devices inside AEP-021 are moved around to various newly created locations within AEP-021, mostly on snow-covered hills. Mobile drones begin taking off and scouting surrounding area. Video reveals interior of AEP-021 to have grown to contain excessive space. And it has been estimated that interior of AEP-021 was larger than Earth. Terrain appears lifeless at all locations during exploration. After several hours, it is determined that the stars overhead are going out, and multiple instances of data expunged can be clearly seen taking their place. 24 hours into exploration, no sun has risen. After 30 hours, Drone F locates object with appearance similar to AEP-021. Object differs from AEP-021 by being several kilometers tall, wide, and deep. One side of object is open, and a miniature sun can be seen illuminating green countryside within object. Crowds of people, estimated to number in the millions, are imaged rushing to get inside. On a nearby hill, two figures can be seen. One is believed to be AEP-021-1 in his mid-forties. Note, AEP-021-1 lacked facial scar. The other is a red-headed man in his early twenties, hypothesized to be the son of AEP-021-1. Note, this has been confirmed by Incident 021-D. The young man seems visibly afraid, staring across the crowds of people. Drone attempts to approach. But AEP-021-1 looks up, noticing drone, and interior of AEP-021 returns to its usual state. Access incident 021-D. 20. A second wooden seat appears within AEP-021. A moment later, a balding man in his early fifties, an older version of the young man recorded in incident 021-C, materializes in the seat. AEP-021-1 is seen regressing to an age of approximately 70. Scar fading away. Attached is a transcription from the video log of events that follow. AEP-021-1 Where are we, son? Son, it's the Ark, father. Looks around, blinking, confused. No, I made the Ark larger than this. Where are all the cities? The farms? Where are the people? You destroyed the cities. You erased the farms. You made the people into other things. Nonsense. Why would I do that? I made the Ark to protect them. To save them from the encroaching end. Why would I kill them? The younger man does not respond. Silence lingers for a few moments. Where is the sun I crafted, then? The younger man points to the candle on the table. Scoffs. Where is my friend, General Silista? Maybe I can get him to tell me where I am. Momentary silence. He led the last few survivors against you about twelve years ago. Appears taken aback for a moment. Nonsense. I loved that man. He was with me through the war, and was my friend for decades after that. He is your godfather, for Kerda's sake. Why would he attack me? Allows the question to hang for a few moments, before giving an unrelated response. He was the last one left alive, besides us two, until I begged you to let him die. Stunned silence. I don't know what has gotten into you, young man. Where is your mother? Mary! Younger man puts his head into his hands. Mary, where are you? You killed Mum when I was fifteen, Dad. Mary stands up from seat and begins to walk around the table. Mary! Tone seems panicked. Where are you? Younger man and his seat disappear. 
AEP-021-1 ages again and his scar reappears. AEP-021-1 continues to walk in circles for several more hours, calling for Mary. Access incident 021-E. 20. A faint sound, similar to a pen scratching at paper, can be heard. After approximately 25 minutes, the interior of AEP-021 changes. Recording devices outside AEP-021 display objects' interior as a black space. Recording devices inside AEP-021 are moved around to newly created locations and are rendered immobile. All recording devices record locations covered in mountains of papers of various size, each page covered with illegible text written in ink. One recording device was positioned well enough to capture some audio. The voices of three separate individuals have been identified, one of which has been confirmed as a child form AEP-021-1. A man can be heard mumbling, as the scratching of a pen on paper from before continues. A child's voice can be heard after some time. Child, have you thought about our offer, then? Have you come to a decision? A second child's voice replies. Yeah, I want to do it. At this point, all audio cuts out. Interior of AEP-021 remains unchanging for 49 hours before reverting to its usual state.